Today's Budget Committee Roundtable purpose is to examine federal housing assistance programs. The goal of this roundtable is to understand how housing assistance is delivered and more importantly, how we can improve it. We can come together at a difficult time for our nation. A global pandemic has set shockwaves through our economy. It's caused businesses to shudder and it's caused jobs to be lost. Against this backdrop, the federal government's current approach to housing assistance is falling short in many ways. As Congress considers additional measures to address housing needs in wake of COVID, it's worth reviewing the current state of federal housing programs and seeing what works and what doesn't so that we can better determine what form those measures should take. I know some would disagree. Critics may argue that working to reform the system could hurt certain constituencies. But that's not what we're about. And usually if we get into the details, those can be solved. But the federal housing system is already failing. People are being left out. Today, the federal government spends more than $50 billion per year on low-income housing assistance programs. It also guarantees $2 trillion in home loans, and it provides billions more in assistance through the tax code. Is that money achieving its intended purpose? We can do better. We better do better. With half a million people homeless and given the significant amount we spend, there's still years-long waiting lists for public housing. Studies have shown that public housing and project-based programs can trap families in high-poverty neighborhoods, which has significant long-term consequences for both their health and their well-being. And programs are scattered across agencies, creating confusion and significant challenges for those seeking assistance. Federal housing bureaucracies have grown so large that they are now failing those they should be serving. Most Americans don't even know the full extent of the programs available or where they can go for help. Critics may also argue that federal housing programs aren't, uh, can't be one size fits all. But in a 2012 report, GAO found housing assistance is fragmented across the 160 programs I mentioned with significant areas of duplication and overlap. One size fits all may not be the answer, but serving the need shouldn't take 160 programs. The GAO report also found that of those 160 programs, 39 helped with buying, selling, or financing a home. That's the duplication. 25 provided assistance for financial rental housing and eight provided assistance for rental property owners. How many places do you have to go and ask questions to see if you qualify and to get answers? The report found that significant overlap existed in the assistance offered, the service delivered, and even the areas served. Finally, the report said opportunities existed to increase collaboration and potentially realize efficiencies. I think the issue comes down to a simple question. If given the amount of resources the federal government puts into federal housing assistance programs each year and setting aside interest groups that may profit from the status quo, would we ever design a system with 160 programs? With programs scattered across multiple federal agencies, the system leads to overlap and waste and actually limits resources that should be going to those in need. We need to get the money to the people. I hope this is the start of a serious bipartisan review to find improvements to the system. That's why we're here, to identify solutions and gather ideas about reform and to discuss how to make these programs work better for those who truly need them.